Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Okay, here you go. Let's pay attention to the story, okay? Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. So today's story is titled, Fire, Help! Oh my goodness, have you ever been in a fire? I hope not. Oh, it must be very, very scary. Yes? I didn't saw fire. No? You didn't see fire? Okay, well, we, we hope that you never see fire. But today's story goes like this. Crack! An odd noise woke up little Amy late at night. Lifting her head, she smelled a foul odor in the air. What do you think that smell was? The fire. The fire, yeah. In another bedroom of her house, the noise woke up father and mother, and they smelled the foul odor also. Amy's older brother also woke up and sniffed the air, but no one wanted to come out of their rooms to see what was happening because burglars often broke into homes in their village in Laos, and they did not want to be attacked. So they didn't know what it was. So finally, Amy's curiosity got the better of her, and she decided to take a look. And peeking out the door, she saw that the television set was engulfed in a ball of fire. The TV was on fire. The television... The television set was in a wooden cabinet in the living room. And on top of that cabinet was a big flower vase like this one I have here. See? And, and, but these are not real flowers. But if these were real flowers, what would be inside the vase? Water. water. Right? So it was full of water. And now everything seemed to be surrounded by... By a big hot fire, orange flames were licking at the ceiling, and the fire was quickly spreading toward the kitchen and garage. Fire! Amy screamed, help, help! But the fire was so hot that no one dared come out of their rooms. Her father, mother, and brother quickly ran to a window at the back of the house and jumped out. But Amy did not run. What do you think Amy did? He ran. No, she didn't run. Only her, her, her family ran, but she didn't run. What do you think she did? She prays for God. Wow, Amelia, you're so smart. Yes. Amy, the fire was so hot that no one dared come out of their rooms. But Amy, she fell on her knees and she prayed to God. God, please save us, she prayed. And at that moment... The big flower vase fell over on the wooden cabinet and into the fire. So this fell over and all the water came out. And what did it do? What did the water do? And it put out the fire. Isn't God awesome and amazing? So the flames decided to stop racing up the ceiling and to the kitchen and to the garage. The fire immediately died out. Oh, do you hear sirens? That might be a fire, too. We pray that, that everybody's safe. Several neighbors had seen the fire and were trying to help. They ran to the front of the house and pounded on the closed wooden windows, trying to break them in in order to enter. And no matter how hard they hit the closed wooden windows, they wouldn't break. And then they saw that the fire had gone out. It was a good thing that the wood, the windows did not break because it was going to was going to cost a lot of money to replace them. So why did the fire go out? Why didn't the windows break? Those weren't those weren't the only strange things that happened. Mother and the children were Christians and loved God of the God of heaven. But father did not know God. He allowed mother and the children to go to church on Sabbath, but he wasn't interested in going with them. Like many people in Laos, he had wooden images of his dead great-great-grandfathers and great-great-grandmothers in a corner of his house. And he honored them. What does that mean? He had wooden images of his great-great-grandmother and great-great-grandfather. So they were like little... Uh, statues made of wood 
of his great-great-grandmother and great-great-grandfather. And they were made of wood, and they were in the corner. And what do you think happened to those in the fire? They got burned down. Yes. So, strangely, the fire did not destroy anything in the house except the wooden images of his dead great-great-grandfathers and great-great-grandmothers. The wooden images were burned to ashes. Amy's family repa repainted the living room after the fire, and they declared their, their home to God. They dedicated their home to God. They realized like never before that their home and everything that they owned actually belonged to God. Father gladly joined mother and the children in the prayer of dedication for the house. He saw that the God who had answered Amy's prayer was most powerful, more powerful than his wooden images. Isn't that wonderful? So everything we have in this earth is given to us by who? By God, right? God gives us everything. So, so by dedicating it to him, we say, thank you, Lord, for this house that we have. Thank you for our car. Thank you for everything that you give us. And we want to serve you. We want to dedicate everything to you. So help us to, to be humble and to um, love you and to serve you and to use everything for your honor and glory. Yes. I saw a fire at the forest. You, yeah, I saw some on TV too. Did you see when the forest was on fire in the news? Yes. So fires are very powerful, but God is more powerful than the fires, right? Well, one time when I was with my grandma and her um, boyfriend, well, they well we they were living with a cabin, and I was going to spend the night, but. Somehow, one night, the fire was going to came in the woods, and they lived up in the mountains of Shaver Lake, and there was a fire, so it was coming, and so we got out there quickly. So you have to evacuate when there's a fire, yeah, because you don't know how far the fire is going to go. Yes, it's very, very dangerous, but if we pray and we trust in the Lord, then he will save us, right? Let's pray. Does anybody want to pray for us? Do you want to pray? Do you want to pray, Amelia? Okay, let's bow our heads. Dear God, we thank you for the Sabbath day, and we thank you for a new day. Oh, Lord, this help us to let us live for a long, long time, and don't let nobody get hurt. Amen. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, grab a, a little bucket and go pick up the offering. <laughs> 